All right, hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is CMP203, Optimized Compute for Performance and Cost. My name is Chad Schmutzer. I am a Principal Developer Advocate for Amazon EC2. Uh, we have a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so in this session, this is a 200 level session, uh, so I won't be diving into every uh, you know, API uh, nook and cranny, um, but we will talk about some APIs and understand how to use those APIs for our workload. So the agenda here is uh, we'll, we'll base on ourselves on how AWS is able to provide compute for virtually every workload. We'll talk about pricing optimization, capacity optimization. Then we'll talk about how we use the tools that AWS provides to optimize for performance and costs across the pricing and capacity optimizations that we talked about. Uh, we'll understand how to take some guidance and best practices into consideration and then we'll wrap up with the conclusion. Um, I did try to include links for additional information as best we can um, uh, in many of the pages, so I encourage you to, to follow those links and learn more as we go through this. All right, so let's get started. Uh, about 13 years ago, uh, a little more than that, Amazon released um, a single instance type, uh, the M1 family, um, and it was basically set up to have a one-size-fits-all uh, on-demand purchasing option for you to use with your um, with your compute in the cloud. It was simple. It was pay for what you use. You can scale it up and scale it down as you needed. Um, and this was a game changer because the cloud really allowed customers um, to do a lot more um, with with no commitment and scale up and scale down as they needed. Um, over time, customers said, "Hey, you know, we would like it if we could have." Uh, additional instance types tuned to the workload requirements that we want to bring to the cloud. So that includes workload types, capabilities, options, um, and so we took that into consideration and we expanded the portfolio of, of compute uh, resources available. So we have workloads, uh, you know, uh, instances for different types of workloads, general purpose, burstable, compute intensive, etc. Different types of capabilities, different processors, lots of choice. Uh, lots of different options to attach to those different instance types. And the result is that we now have 350 plus different instance types for, to, to power virtually every workload and business need uh, that customers bring to the cloud. So one question that we often get is, well, with all of this choice um, and with always trying to keep cost optimization in the back of mind in, uh, or across our workloads and our requirements, do I have to sacrifice uh, performance and availability uh, in exchange for cost optimization. When, if I want to optimize for cost, do I have to think about uh, sacrificing performance and availability? And the answer to that is, is no. It turns out it's really just a matter of understanding your different pricing options, using the right tools for managing your capacity, and then taking advantage of the guidance and best practices that we provide for that. So when you want to understand uh, Amazon EC2 cost and capacity, it's really coming down to three things. It's understanding pricing options, it's understanding capacity options, and understanding guidance available to help you make the right decisions. So we want to think about achieving the optimal price and performance with different purchasing models. Uh, how do we then turn around and launch capacity um, to, to model against the pricing optimizations? And then how do we feed the guidance back into that platform? So let's start here with the pricing category. And let's make sure that we understand the fundamental different EC2 purchase options that AWS provides. The first is on-demand instances. This is where you launch comp compute capacity, where you pay by the second. There are no long-term commitments. Great for spiky workloads and as you're defining your needs. Over time, as you really understand what you will need for the foreseeable future, it's great to lock into savings against your on-demand instances with uh, savings plans. And I, I also have RIs listed here as well, because some of you may uh, you know, have an understanding of RIs. But savings plans are really what you want to focus on when you want to understand how do I optimize for cost uh, against my on-demand infrastructure. Um, savings plans provide great discounts um, um, with more flexibility across your on-demand workloads. And then finally, to truly optimize your cost against um, scale and performance, you want to think about tapping into our spare capacity through what we call spot instances. Spot instances are um, the same as on-demand instances, except the, the difference is that we can interrupt the instances whenever we need the capacity back. Um, in exchange for that, um, for the potential of being interrupted, you can achieve up to 90% savings off of on-demand prices. So these type of instances are great for uh, fault tolerant, flexible, and stateless workloads. So let's understand. Um, we want to focus in this talk on savings plans and spot instances because these are going to really help us optimize against um, uh, the savings and the um, performance optimization within our workloads. 
on the uh, on the outer ends we have on demand instances and spot instances these are actually launching capacity for your workloads to run on right so savings plans optimize against on demand instances while spot instances um, launch capacity um, and, and optimize costs directly inside of them so savings plans provide a couple of different options here we have compute savings plans and ec2 instance savings plans so the one thing to understand is that the most flexible of these are compute savings plans, which basically allow you to optimize your spend um, um, across uh, lots of uh, flexibility, right? So you can optimize your spend across instance families, moving between C5s and M5s. Um, you can uh, optimize across regions. You can optimize across Windows and Linux, different operating systems, tenancy and compute options, even across EC2 and AWS Fargate. So lots of flexibility comes. And if you want to learn more about savings plans, uh, check out the link on this page um, and just understand savings plans are the best way for you to to lock in savings in over a one year or a three year period of time against your on demand launches. Now, spot instances also provide deep savings off of the on demand price. And again, spot instances are really just the ability to tap into our spare capacity. It's the same infrastructure. It's the same instances. You're just paying for them in a different way. And if we ever need that spare capacity back, we give you a heads up. Uh, we give you a warning that we need to take that capacity back and then you can wrap up your work and migrate work to a different instance, different spot instance if you'd like. Um, pricing with spot, spot instances is great. Uh, it's smooth and frequent changes. Um, uh, you can use all different instance types and av availability zones when it comes to spot instances. And you can also um, uh, you know, monitor for when we need the capacity back. We give you an interruption notice. And we also give you, um, if we can, uh, a heads up that a particular instance is at a high risk of interruption. And so we let you know that ahead of time. Um, we also uh, do our best to integrate spot instances into other AWS services and third party services as well, partner offerings as well as um, open source software. If you'd like to give us a heads up that you would like to see spot instances in, uh, integrated in a particular open source project, please do check out the public roadmap for EC2 spot instance integrations. You see the link here. Um, check it out. And if you have a uh, particular uh, software that you'd love to see spot integrated in, please do let us know by uh, opening up an, an issue there. OK, so second thing to think about is capacity launches. So I said earlier, when you launch an on-demand instance or a spot instance, that's actually launching capacity. So we want to think about um, what are the tools that we can use to launch capacity to optimize for price, performance, and availability. So obviously, uh, different workloads require a different blend of purchasing options. And, and um, we want to think about, does this particular workload need uh, a focus on on-demand instances, or does it need a focus on spot instances? Am I, is my workload interruption tolerant? Then we want to think about using spot instances. If it's not interruption tolerant, we want to think about using on-demand instances and then optimizing costs with a savings plan on top of that. Um, so we can see here on the left, uh, databases, for example, those are very stateful, steady state workloads, not a great option for spot instances. So we want to think about using on-demand and then layering savings plans on top of that. As we move throughout this, we see different types of workloads will have different blends. For example, um, video rendering may be a great blend with a baseline of, of on-demand with savings plans and then layering on top of that um, spot instances for, for you know, scaling up and scaling down to, to, to compute our rendering faster. Or stateless web applications or APIs. We want to have a good blend of, of on-demand uh, layered with savings plans and then using spot instances to scale around that. So how do we do this effectively in the cloud? How do we think about um, scaling up and scaling down, keeping uh, capacity launches in mind, thinking about optimizing for performance and, and availability? What are, what are some of the tools that AWS provides to allow that to happen? Well, one of the tools we provide uh, is called on-demand capacity reservations. So for those workloads that are steady state, we want to think about um, utilizing on-demand capacity reservations to reserve the capacity that you need for that steady state workload. There's no commitments required for on-demand capacity reservations. You can tailor them to your availability zone. Um, we hold that capacity for you whether you're running an instance or not. You can share these reservations across accounts. Um, you can also group these reservations together using AWS resource groups. Um, but we highly recommend that you combine on-demand capacity reservations with savings plans, right? They work together very nicely to reserve your capacity as well as layering that savings on top of that capacity reservation. And you can learn more here um, by following this link. Okay, so 
What about launching those workloads where we want to blend um, on demand with savings plans and spot instances into, into a workload? Remember that, that chart I showed you where you have different workloads that have different blends of capacity launches with diff different purchasing options in the same environment? Well, EC2 auto scaling is, is to the rescue here, right? You can automatically scale your instance types and purchase options in a single auto scaling group um, to optimize your cost, availability, and performance. So capacity optimized is an allocation strategy that helps you launch into the most available spot instances. So you want to think about using the capacity optimized allocation strategy within your auto scaling group. Um, you can also choose to use a lowest price strategy, which, which really allows you to tap into the, the lowest price spot instances available within an auto scaling group. You can also use a prioritized list for the on-demand portion of your auto scaling group to say, um, please launch into instance types that I have savings plans for so that I can appropriately blend my uh, on-demand instances with savings plans as well as my spot instances. And then finally, for workloads that do want to tap into on-demand uh, on demand capacity reservations, you can target capacity reservations using an AWS resource group with, with, the, uh, with the ARN or the, AR, the ARN that you can reference within the auto scaling group. If you'd like to learn more, you can follow a self guided workshop for uh, capacity, uh, sorry, for EC2 auto scaling um, here with this link. Um, and you just want to keep in mind auto scaling is here to help you reduce your cost, optimize performance, and eliminate operational overhead. So when you think about what is the appropriate tool for me to launch my capacity and blend my savings and availability? Think about EC2 auto scaling. Okay, so let's dive into what a, uh, uh, an example configuration might look for for an EC2 auto scaling group to help do the heavy lifting for you. All right, so here we have an example configuration. Um, I like to say just tell EC2 auto scaling what you need um, and how flexible you can be and let EC2 auto scaling figure everything out. So first of all, you see this mixed instances policy. This is where you allow EC2 auto scaling to provision across a combination of on-demand and spot instances across multiple instance types. Second, you can actually provide a flexible list of instance types for EC2 auto scaling to tap into. It's going to tap into finding the most available spot capacity, and it's going to help tap into an, an ordered list of priority instance types to help you uh, then tap into savings plans against the list of instances that you're providing in your auto scaling group. Third, for workloads that require that baseline on-demand capacity, you can set a, a level set of baseline uh, amount of on-demand capacity. And then you can use allocation strategies to, to explain to auto scaling how you would like it to allocate capacity for you as it scales up and scales down. Finally, um, we've enabled a new feature called Capacity Rebalance that just launched. Um, and Capacity Rebalance is designed to allow you to um, use spot instances in your auto scaling group with uh, keeping availability in mind, right? So uh, we'll talk a little bit more in the next slide about what Capacity Rebalance does. Um, but just understand it's a great feature that allows you to, to tell um, auto scaling to be aware of spot instance interruptions and instances that are at, a, at an elevated risk of interruption and have it uh, manage um, availability for you automatically. So let's take a look at what uh, capacity optimized uh, allocation strategy does for, the, for us when it comes to launching spot instances within our auto scaling group. Um, for EC2 auto scaling spot backed workloads, um, we can see for here as an example allocation where the auto scaling group took in our list of instance types that we're able to use in our, in our environment and it allocated them according to um, the most available spot capacity that we had. Um, so you can see on the, in the availability zone one, it launched into R5s. In availability zone B, it launched into C5s. In availability zone C, it launched into M5s. And so we can see that what's happening here is capacity optimized allocation strategy is effectively looking for the most available spot capacity and therefore launching you automatically into, uh, into the capacity pools um, that have the least likelihood of interruption um, to help you um, ha maintain uh, availability in your workload. So I mentioned earlier we launched a new feature called um, Capacity Rebalance. Well, Capacity Rebalance is tapping into a brand new signal that we just uh, released called the EC2 Instance Rebalance Recommendation for Spot Instances. Um, this is a new signal that notifies you when a particular spot instance is at elevated risk of interruption. The signal can actually arrive sooner than the existing two-minute spot instance interruption notice. Um, so what happens is um, this gives you the ability and the opportunity to proactively rebalance your workload to newer existing spot instances that are not at elevated risk of interruption. Um, 
This allows you to do things like checkpointing your work early, saving as much state as possible. It also helps prevent scheduling new work on instances that are, that are at elevated risk of interruption, thus increasing the chance of completing your work. If you'd like to learn more about uh, in EC2, instance capacity rebalance, uh, EC2 instance rebalance recommendation for spot instances, uh, please check out this link um, that we have here on this slide. So within EC2 autoscaling itself, um, we now have also introduced a new feature called capacity rebalancing for EC2 autoscaling. So what exactly does this do? This is a new feature that proactively manages the EC2 spot instance lifecycle in an, in an autoscaling group. So this helps increase the emphasis on availability. It helps provide a seamless and automated experience for maintaining desired capacity. And finally, it works best when you combine it with the mixed instances policy and the capacity optimized allocation strategy that I just talked about. So again, keep in mind, capacity rebalancing is designed to allow you to blend in spot instances into your auto scaling group and allow, allow it to do the heavy lifting of understanding when an interruption is about to occur and proactively attempting to launch replacement spot instance capacity to help maintain overall availability to your workload. And if you'd like to learn more, um, please do check out the learn more link that I've, uh, that I've put here on this page. Okay, so how does capacity rebalancing work? Effectively, what it does is if you have a set of spot instances running, EC2 uh, um, Autoscaling monitors for the rebalance recommendations on the individual instances that are spot instances that are running in your workload. When the rebalance recommendation uh, appears, uh, EC2 Autoscaling proactively launches replacement, uh, replacement capacity for you for existing spot instances that are at elevated risk of interruption. It detaches from elastic load balancing if necessary. It runs through lifecycle hooks as best um, as can that have been configured. And then finally, once the new instance spot instance has passed its health check, it then shuts down the instance that had um, that was at elevated risk of interruption. So again, EC2 autoscaling is doing all of this for you. It's taking the heavy lifting off of you and actively and proactively um, taking, a, um, uh, taking advantage of understanding which instances are at elevated risk of interruption and then helping you maintain availability across your workload. Um, the great news here is that Capacity rebalancing is actually quite easy to enable. Um, it's just a simple configuration option. You can simply turn capacity rebalance um, on in either the console by simply checking the box that says uh, enable capacity rebalance, or in the CLI um, or in your API, you can simply enable uh, the capacity rebalance option, just set it to true. Um, and the other great thing is that capacity rebalancing is also available in AWS CloudFormation. So CloudFormation, um, has support for capacity rebalancing for those of you that do use CloudFormation for launching your capacity. Um, so do check that out. Um, again, just a single config, um, and it really takes the heavy lifting off of, of locking into great savings using spot in instances in your workloads, taking that off of your plate, and allowing you to run with um, optimizing your, your overall cost, spend, and availability. So let's take a look at capacity rebalancing in action. Um, I have here an example autoscaling group um, that I've provisioned. We can see that I have spot instances provisioned across R5s, C5s, and M5s across different availability zones. Um, so how does capacity rebalancing work? Um, so what it does is it effectively looks um, and monitors, again, for that capacity, uh, that rebalance recommendation signal to appear. Um, and if it does happen to appear on any instance that's running within your autoscaling group, um, what it does is it, is it effectively, proactively launches a new spot instance um, uh, against the capacity uh, optimized allocation strategy that we have here uh, configured in our autoscaling group. It launches a new instance. When that, in when that instance has launched and gone through health checks, um, the, the autoscaling group removes and shuts down the instance that had the, um, had the rebalance recommendation signal applied to it and then it effectively drops in the replacement spot instance um, to help maintain overall availability to your workload. Um, so let's run through that again just to make sure that you understand. If there's um, an, an example um, in US East 1B, if one of the capacity pools is under constraint, for example, the C5 larges, um, there's some volatility happening there, um, a rebalance recommendation may appear on one of the C5s that are running in that particular availability zone. Capacity rebalancing picks that up, it proactively launches 
um, a new spot instance. In this case, it launched an M5 large because it determined that was the most available spot instance um, for that particular availability zone. It launches it, it goes through health checks. Um, once that's happened, um, it, it shuts down the instance that had the rebalance recommendation. It takes it through detaching from a load balancer and draining connections and whatever else you like to run, the lifecycle hooks. Um, and when all of that has happened, it drops in the new spot instance in place. And so it, it really does this in parallel, but the whole idea here is that capacity rebalancing is doing its best to help maintain availability for you across your autoscaling groups. Okay, so for those of you that want to use um, a blend of spot instances and on-demand instances and optimize for cost, availability, and performance across, um, let's say, different types of workloads. Um, you can use an autoscaling group, or you can look to use a, a service that has integrated into um, an autoscaling group so that you can take all the advantage, you know, use all the advantages that I just talked about of, of the powerful features of an autoscaling group, um, but, but th that have been integrated into individual services that AWS offers. So, for example, if you run a container platform, Let's take, for example, the Amazon Elastic uh, Container Service or, or, or Amazon ECS. If you would like to run an optimize for, um, for cost optimization as well as performance and availability in your ECS clusters, um, you can take advantage of spot instances because ECS can tap into autoscaling groups. Um, and you can do this um, through what are called capacity providers. So if you take a look at ECS, um, you, can, you can launch capacity providers that are based on EC2 autoscaling groups, um, and you can then tie those EC2 autoscaling groups into ECS clusters uh, through capacity providers, and then you can have ECS automatically provision your capacity for you. You can have it automatically scale up and scale down, and basically let um, ECS with a combination of EC2 autoscaling take the heavy lifting off of your shoulders and allow um, the, the ECS cluster and autoscaling to work together to automatically provision for a capacity at scale while optimizing for cost all at the same time. And if you'd like to learn more, um, please do check out um, the link here I have to, to understand more about how um, spot instances um, can be utilized within ECS. Okay, so Amazon EKS. Um, Amazon EKS um, is a great option for, for those of you that are running um, Kubernetes-based workloads, right? It's a it's fully managed um, Kubernetes uh, environment on top of AWS. Um, EKS can also be used with EC2 autoscaling, right? So you can um, enable um, a lot of what we just talked about with EC2 autoscaling in your managed Kubernetes clusters. Um, we also provide what is called the AWS Node Termination Handler. Which has been um, we, which we launched in order to allow you to gracefully handle interruptions within your Kubernetes cluster um, to allow automatic draining, um, graceful um, draining of containers across instances, um, and effectively allowing you to handle the the spot instance lifecycle in a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so do check out the AWS Node Termination Handler um, and learn more through a self guided workshop of how you can implement um, EC2 autoscaling groups in your EKS clusters or your Kubernetes self-managed clusters on top of AWS and understand how you can blend um, your purchasing options of on-demand and spot and scale uh, with savings in mind um, across all of these tiers. Okay, so Amazon EMR. Amazon EMR is a, a managed uh, big data service um, on top of AWS. Um, a lot of customers take advantage of cost optimization inside of Amazon EMR by tying in the use of spot instances. Um, the great thing about Amazon EMR, Amazon EMR is that it recently uh, launched a new feature called Allocation Strategies, which allow you to provision EC2, EC2 instances in an Amazon EMR cluster. Um, so Allocation Strategies effectively allow you to tell EMR how to allocate your capacity um, with, a, with a goal of optimizing for um, lowest price as well as um, reduced likelihood of interruptions, right? So and when you're using on-demand instances within your EMR cluster, you have the lowest price allocation strategy, which says, um, look across all the instances that you've allowed me to use in my EMR cluster and look for the lowest price instance types. Um, when it comes to the spot side of an EMR cluster, you can use allocation strategies to use the capacity optimized strategy, which effectively launches spot instances into the most available spot instance pools 
therefore reducing likelihood of interruption to your EMR workload. Um, you can also um, provide up to 15 different instance types per task instance fleet when using allocation strategies within your EMR cluster. Um, so do take a, uh, take a look at Amazon uh, EMR for, for your big data workloads, uh, for Hadoop and Spark-based workloads. Um, if you'd like to run through a self-guided workshop, there's a link here. Um, the self-guided workshop will take you through running a, a Spark cluster on Amazon EMR, um, and it helps you understand how to take advantage of, of all these strategies that we just talked about here. Okay, so finally, um, one great option is AWS Batch. So for those of you that are running um, batch processing workloads on top of AWS, um, consider using AWS Batch because it provides built-in support for EC2 auto-scaling and spot instances um, that we've just been talking about. It's a fully managed, fully managed batch processing service, and it has what are called um, built-in cost-optimized resource provisioning. And what this effectively is, is, is the built-in availability of launching into um, allocation strategies designed with uh, capacity um, and spot capacity and well as um, best fit progressive, which means looking at the, the most cost effective um, on demand instances to use for your batch processing workloads. Um, so for example, you can actually combine on demand and spot compute environments within AWS batch in order to optimize for both, um, for both cost and scale and availability. Um, if you'd like to learn more, do check out the link. And if you'd like to run through a self-guided workshop, we have a, a self-guided workshop that um, allows you to run through this particular use case here as well. OK, so finally, um, we want to take into consideration guidance. We want to understand, um, have we done a good job at optimizing for our performance and for our costs within our environments? Um, so, so the best way to do this is to tap into a feature, a service called AWS Compute Optimizer. Now, AWS Compute Optimizer was, was launched to help you understand, um, um, you know, how am I optimizing across uh, cost and performance within my environment? Um, and it does this, um, and it, it's been uh, effectively applying insights to millions of different workloads and making recommendations to those um, within AWS. Um, and so um, it helps you save time by comparing and allowing you to, to select optimal workloads against uh, different resources uh, types for within your workload. So today, Compute Optimizer is, is able to um, recommend across 145 plus instance types across the M, C, R, T, and X families. If you'd like to learn more, um, take a look at this link here um, that I have on this slide um, and learn more about how Compute Optimizer can work in your environment. So I have an example slide here that um, helps you understand a bit more. Um, with AWS Compute Optimizer, it, it allows you to easily choose um, you know, which instance types are optimal for your particular workload. And it does this by analyzing CloudWatch metrics um, within your environment that are running against your workloads. And then it helps give intuitive and actionable recommendations, um, taking a, into consideration the metrics that it's, that it's monitoring. Um, it helps recommend optimal EC2 instance types it helps um, you optimize for both performance and it helps you reduce cost by making recommendations to help right size your workloads. Um, it's able to uh, recommend up to three different instance types per workload. Um, and, and recently it, it launched um, a feature to take in additional EBS metrics to help you understand the full picture of your, of your EC2 workloads that it can help you optimize for. Um, the great news about Compute Optimizer is that it's available at no additional charge. All you have to do is go into your, into your console or into your CLI, simply turn on Compute Optimizer, and then check back uh, against the recommendations that it brings to you uh, across your account. Okay, so key takeaways. First of all, first thing to do is understand EC2 is designed to provide the right compute for virtually every workload. We have um, you know, workload optimized EC2 instance types. Do take a look at all the instance types that are available to you, but think about how many different types you can use within any individual workload. Um, second, understand um, how, to, how to optimize for cost, um, lower cost, and innovate faster by tapping into both spot instances as well as savings plans. If you, if you combine these, um, this is the best way to optimize for, um, for your savings and for your um, scale all at the same time, as well as performance and availability. Um, three, automate that by tapping into EC2 autoscaling, right? It's a tool that allows you to blend what we just covered here in one and two in the sense of um, tell autoscaling what you're able to use, how flexible you are, 
what different instance types you can use, which availability zones you can use, um, which purchasing options and instance types you can use, and then let EC2 autoscaling go figure it out for you. And if you like to tap into the integration of autoscaling into other AWS services, by all means do that. Take a look at ECS, EKS, Batch, EMR, um, and many other uh, um, AWS services, as, as well as third-party services that have integrated um, to use services like EC2 autoscaling. And then finally, um, think about optimizing your workloads by following up on recommendations coming from AWS Compute Optimizer. Do turn it on, um, take a look at the recommendations that it gives to you, and then take advantage of understanding those recommendations, and then going back and updating the instance types that you've used to power your particular workloads. So I really want to thank you for the time you've spent with me today. Um, uh, you do uh, follow me on Twitter if you, if you can, or if you'd like to drop me an email, there's my email address. I'd love to hear from you how you're optimizing your compute, your performance and availability on AWS uh, EC2 platform. I'd love to learn more about you and, and, and understand um, how you're doing that. So again, thanks for your time. Please don't forget to fill out um, the feedback survey. Um, and again, thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.